Hey everyone, welcome back. It's the final week of Incarnon Rotations before it all resets. This week, I chose Dread and Zylocke. The other options just didn't seem that appealing to me, but now I heard Despair Incarnon is basically delayed explosive kunais, like a true space ninja. Hate throws spectral sights on light attacks and has a small AoE, and Cybeer creates ice fields on slamming. The Dread Incarnon is not that unique, being mechanically similar to the Paris Incarnon. This means per calculations and mod scaling effects such as Gunseo can also be considered similar to Paris. The Dread itself is rather strong, but the perks are quite bugged and not that important. As always, these weapons are the second generation of Incarnon's ship with the Duviri Paradox update. The only way to get them is from Steel Path Circuit Mode. After clearing the quest and having Steel Path unlocked, you need to pick two of the weapons on rotation to work towards on Steel Path Circuit Mode. Clearing rounds gives points to point tiers. Reach the appropriate point tier and return to this screen to claim your loot. The Incarnon Genesis adapters have a rotating six-week schedule with the full detail in this video's description. If you do not get the adapter for your weapon before a weekly reset, it will not reappear for six weeks. If you get the adapter, you can use it on your appropriate weapon at Cavalier and the Chrysalith whenever you want. Keep in mind, attaching the adapter requires Duviri open world materials and has unlocked requirements on the Incarnon tree perks, just like the original Incarnon weapons from the Angels update as well. The Dread Incarnon's gimmick is very simple. Shots turn into extremely wide horizontal waves that fire where you go. Remember how the Siam can shoot a wave or Nermont's first perk? It's a bow version of that with zero gravity and functions like a typical gun. It also has infinite body punch through. The Incarnon mode does not have a bonus headshot multiplier and does the same damage on the body. However, it does count as a headshot still and activate headshot dependent abilities, arcanes, or mons. Then Karnon shot is 25% impact, 25% slash, and 50% heat. While the Incarnon perks can grant extra innate status, it is still more effective for slash builds to use hunter munitions. On the other hand, the normal mode is 80% slash and does not need hunter munitions. When activating Incarnon mode, crit damage increases from base 2 to 3, and status goes from 20 to 30%. Crit chance remains the same, and the actual shot has 408 damage with no noticeable falloff. Basically, Dread Incarnon is a more uh, crit-focused Paris Incarnon. The Incarnon perks themselves are very, very simple. What isn't simple is how they are bunged. Perked 1, you shoot heads to build meter. Then a 2.5 meters punch through allows Dread to easily rack up headshots in a crowd, and can easily max out the Incarnon bar in 2 to 3 shots if you hit multiple enemies. Activating Alt Fire with a partial bar will grant the corresponding amount of partial Incarnon ammo. The Incarnon mode holds up to 20 arrows, but each one can easily create out an entire crowd. This maximum is unaffected by magazine or ammo max perks, nor ammo efficiency abilities. Perk 2 is where the weird stuff begins. First of all, no, Coup de Grasse and its effects is not bunked. But what is wrong with it is that it requires a full stalker loadout. Despair, Hate, and Dread use that once. Despair and Hate have perks in the second tree that state requires all three weapons to activate. For some reason, Coup de Grasse has this text absent even though it's required. DE, please fix this cosmetic text that reflects this as it's quite misleading. Also, multi-shot and punch through effect coup de grace. This means a single shot in any mode can instantly max this mod, since each hit on each enemy is tracked separately. You need to completely miss a shot for it to wipe. This bonus can only be stacked in normal mode and cannot be gained or lost in Incarnon mode. The 50% fire rate and plus 50 damage conditional bonus freezes when you activate Incarnon mode. You also actually get the bonus in Incarnon mode, meaning a permanent 50% fire rate and plus 50 damage bonus until Incarnon mode ends. But yeah, if you don't end to use a full stalker loadout, this perk is useless. Which leaves us with Hitman's opportunity for 99% of players. This increased damage by plus 100% works like Gun CO. Gun CO is multiplicative on the Incarnon mode, meaning it includes all of the increased damage by plus 70 amounts. Even without Gun CO, this means this perk straight up doubles your damage when enemies are below 50% HP. If you have Gun CO present, then it contributes less due to diminishing returns, but it also means this bonus damage still even without extra status effects. But for the non-Incarnon not normal mode, oh boy, it is a super bug. It's like Gun CO, but additive on normal mode, right? This means it ignores the plus 70 and 8 damage boost Hitman opportunity it gives. But here's the other one. Whether you use the quick shot or full charge, it always bases the damage bonus off the uncharged shot. And there's no reason to ever use the uncharged shot. So how much base damage does the perk actually give to full charge shots? 
That's equivalent to 41.3% more base damage, or basically nothing. This isn't even an overall 10% damage increase, because usually with a weapon arcane, your weapon has over 460% base damage scaling. Another 41.38% isn't that much. This also means Gun Seal sucks for damage on this weapon in normal mode, because instead of 80% damage per status, you're actually only getting 33.1% base damage per status on normal mode. It will still be worth using though, because the plus 80% status is needed for a natural slash build that doesn't use Hunter Munitions. Anyways, we don't have a choice of perks on the second tree if you don't use Stalker Loadout. Perk 3 is easy. Zoom is helpful for landing headshots to stack in Karnon meter. You don't need headshots in Karnon mode and just aiming at roughly headshot level will clip the heads of the entire crowd. And Karnon mode also doesn't have zoom when you ADS to start with. Therefore, Marksman focus is useless, and Karnon mode doesn't use actual arrow ammo, and normal mode has so many shots in reserve that a single Vigilante Supplies Exilus can fix all your ammo problems if you ever use in Karnon mode. Therefore, Hitman's Horde is useless. Take Swift Deliverance for faster arrows and Incarnon shots. Perk 4 is also simple. Survivor's Ed is garbage. Why? Because the Dread already has so much crit chance that adding 10% to Nate is basically unnoticeable. On the other hand, Dread does not have that high status. Therefore, any build that relies on status procs to DPS, such as Gas or Heat, will use Elemental Balance since this almost doubles the Nate status of Incarnon mode from 30 to 54%. It also more than doubles the Normal Mode status from 20 to 44%. This means you will proc roughly twice as much status effects to DPS, which is stronger than Zeroed In. Zeroed In only increases your innate crit multiplier by plus 1. Since normal mode is base 2, going to 3 times is only a 1.5 times damage increase. And Karnon mode is base 3 times, and going to 4 times is only a 1.33 times damage increase. It pales in comparison to roughly doubling status procs with elemental balance on status DPS builds. But for a build killing with raw damage corrosive or sourcing slash procs from hunting munitions instead of status chance, you will pick zeroed in. This is because status chance does almost nothing for those builds. You only need one viral proc from hunting munitions, and corrosive builds don't really care if you inflict corrosive procs or not. The arrows do not have any kind of AoE whatsoever, despite the visual AoE, and they disappear when they contact Zephyr Tornadoes, meaning there is no interaction here. If you shoot enemies directly with the Dread and Karnon during Tornadoes, the damage will not splash into the Tornadoes and rebound back to multiplier damage. Basically, there is no synergy with Zephyr, except if you use Gas or Electric Dread, but those builds would kill grouped enemies anyways, even without Tornado. The arrow acts exactly like Nanaruk and Meg Bubble, and appears to have infinite projectile life Spam. I'm not sure if the same holds true for Paris and Karnon, but just like Nataru, it is unable to hit the same enemy more than once. This makes it suitable for death trap for enemies pulled in, but it will not infinitely scale, since it cannot hit enemies again and does not have an AoE. Zadis Whisper, on the other hand, can do some weird things and pass shots across a crowd, however the trajectory is unpredictable and somewhat inconsistent unless you group enemies together for magnetines at home. This is more just a fun meme using it this way rather than practical. Certain builds today require arcane acceleration to function properly. There are usually compromises on the build that will allow it to work even without this arcane. I will always distinguish which Incarnon perks are used for a build, as well as whether or not Arcane Acceleration is completely unnecessary, optional, or strongly recommended. I do not use Split Flights on any build, because the non-Incarnon does too little damage for the spread to be of use. By contrast, the Incarnon mode hitbox is so ridiculously large that you do not benefit much from spreading shots. It actually barely spreads horizontally, and only slightly increases the vertical spread for easier headshots. Remember that if you don't shoot for more than 2 seconds, you lose all stats. Since Dread Incarnate Mode has more than enough damage and massive hitboxes as well as infinite body punch through, I prefer consistent multi shot of Galvanized Chamber Brings. For every build today, Longbow Sharp Shot is always the best in Slot Arcane. This is because Longbow Sharp Shot is an external final damage multiplier instead of additive to anything. Understandably, this arcane can be hard to acquire, and thus I will showcase the next best weapon arcane for each build. The exception is the Demolus Killing Heat and Hair build, which I will directly showcase longbow scaling. It's very easy to shoot headshot level to activate arcanes, or say, deadhead headshot multiplier, because of how little zoom you have in Incarnon mode, and how wide of a shot you have, so just shooting at roughly head height is enough. The first build we look at today is the only non-Incarnon build. 
This is for those with nostalgia that want their slash dread back. You will be taking the elemental balance perk for extra status chance. It does not get enough kills for solo steel path at roughly 80 a minute, and I'm only doing this for those that miss the OG weapon. All of the Incarnon builds do 100 kills a minute or higher. It is a natural slash build since dread is base 80% slash and taking elemental balance increases our base status chance to 44%. With the right mods, we actually reach 114.4% status. This means each arrow without multi-shot will proc 0.915 slash procs per enemy they hit. Significantly better than Hunter Munitions 30% slash rate on crit corresponding to 0.3 slash procs per enemy hit. We do not take split flights, because the arrows have a tiny hitbox and I'm not using a grouping build like I did for Daikyu, since Dread even with Incarnon perks in normal mode is much weaker than Daikyu gas DPS, and that spam shooting bodies literally does so little damage that Dread cannot kill properly. We're going pure slash since Dread doesn't really need the viral. This Dread produces 3 times more slash procs than if they came from Hunter Munitions, meaning modding viral is actively a waste of slots since we give up 2 mod slots that would boost slash scaling for viral procs instead to end up with one third the slash procs per shot. Gun CO is used because the 80% status increases our total slash procs by 1.44 times, and the tiny bit of bugged base damage it gives is still worth more than the extra plus 10% status rifle aptitude would have brought. Prime to Bane double dips bleeds for 2.4 times more damage, and Vigilante supplies gives us ammo conversion as well as a small crit boost. Build the two onwards are all in Karnon builds. The most basic is the most iconic. You'll be taking zeroed in perk for the extra plus 1 and 8 crit damage. Red crit corrosive dread in Karnon. This first version of the build is meant to be used with Arcane Acceleration. While only fire rate mods double dip their effect on bow draw rate, a plus 90% from the Arcane still pushes Incarnon draw time down to 0.32 seconds. Comfortably low. And since infinite body punch through on red crits, it's super easy to maintain the 9 seconds uptime on the Arcane. If you do not want to use Arcane Acceleration and want the absolute most brain dead build to use, you can skip the Arcane. Swap Galvanized Scope for Val Acceleration so you don't have to ADS for Giga Red Crits, though I would still recommend using using it, and swap point strike for critical delay. You still end up with a 140% fire rate due to double dipping, which cuts draw time down to 0.25 seconds. Do keep in mind you're missing almost half your damage if you do this instead of using arcane acceleration with a double crit chance mon build. Gun CO is a final multiplier in all dreading card on build, so you'll be seeing it on the rest of them today. Vigilante Supplies is entirely optional. We go deadhead since you just have to loosely aim head height before you shoot. ADS doesn't even zoom for Incarnon mode, so it's easy to benefit from Galvanized Scope. Granted, as I always said, a longbow sharp shot would be better. The alternative main Incarnon build is Viral Hunter Munitions and is the one you can bring to Endurance. This build also uses the zeroed in perk for infinite plus 1 times innate crit damage. The only things that have changed is running 1 crit chance mod instead of 2 so that we could fit Hunter Munitions. Elementals have become Viral instead of Corrosive, being prime cryo rounds of Malignant Force. We also offer Critical Delay because the bow has no space for fire rate mods anyways due to needing another slot for Hunter Munitions. Even with point strike, the base draw rate is 0.6 seconds on Incarnon mode. Therefore, you run Critical Delay for a better crit, but always use Arcane Acceleration on your frame with Viral Hunting Munitions Dread Incarnon. This results in a net positive plus 50% fire rate for a 0.4 seconds draw time. Higher raw viral not only increases chances of proccing like a 60-60 cold mod could, but also much higher raw damage from prime cry rounds to kill trash fodder and not needing viral procs and slash. Our last two builds are much more situational. The first is a Dread Gas build that uses Elemental Balance perk to nearly double DPS, since most of our damage will be coming from overlapping gas clouds and not the main hit. Now, I would not recommend using this as a standard build because of how gas works. With Ensnare, I normally use gas for setups to give absurd nuke scaling or turn a single target weapon into an AoE weapon. Dread is neither. It already has way higher than enough damage to kill base steel path, while at the same time having nowhere near enough damage to kill Endurance with gas. Dread's hitbox is also so large that it can hit everything in a group with Ensnare. Therefore, while Gas Dread and Karnon does outperform Gas Nanaruk and Karnon by killing everything instantly with the actual hit instead of Clouds, so does Corrosive, or Viral Hunter Munitions, a Dread and Karnon. Non-Gas Nanaruk, on the other hand, cannot because the hitbox is too small, which is what Gas would fix. 
See what I mean? Therefore, use this if you want, but it does not have a practical benefit in the current meta. It strongly wants grouping to perform at its best, however, Viral Hunt Munitions and Corrosive matches its one-shot potential in groups, while surpassing it in non-grouping setups. Because Dreads Incarnate Mode is base heat, a single Toxin mod makes gas, and because we don't have a Progenitor bonus, you do not have space for Hunt Munitions. Therefore, you would have to have dropped Hammer Shot to do that, but that also results in an overall loss of damage once Merciless stacks are built up. On the other hand, Hammershot lets us surpass 100% status for gas clouds everywhere, so it's up for you to decide. Merciless, because you ain't betting on headshot kills reliably with gas. Otherwise, be my guess with Deadhead. This final build is a Heat and Hair Dread build. Unlike the melee Heat and Hair setups with Simon, etc. I've shown, you don't need to build any combo, so it's just one stop, touch, and go. Honestly, it's a decent bit weaker than those other Heat and Hair options, but it can still work out putting roughly 900k in raw damage plus a single tick of the dot per shot on Rivenless, buffless loadout. This means with any kind of buffs or ribbon, you could instantly one-shot any level 9k demless if you wait for the heat dots to tick, albeit with armor strip. Or you could shoot twice and kill them near instantly. Heat Inherit pulls all heat percent from the primer weapon instead of DPS weapon. However, I still use Thermite Rounds on Dread because it overall increases the amount, not the damage, the amount of heat procs this weapon will apply in a Heat Inherit build to the demless by 1.83 times. An extra 83% total damage is insane for an 8th slot flex mod. Vile Acceleration makes it much more comfortable to use while offering an instant easy follow-up shot to immediately apply another 900k in damage plus first dot tick. I opted for Longbow Sharp Shot since I'd be shooting Demless Heads anyways. This is by far the strongest arcane for Dread and benefits our first shot, one kill setup. It has no duration on the timer so you can shoot a trash fodder in the head with Dread before you go to kill the Demless. Banes are extremely important because in Heat Inherit, one Bane comes from the primer that applied in the first stack, and the second comes from the DPS weapon. These multiply together to calculate our damage, meaning our primer has to run a max heat percent and a primed Bane too. I picked a simple Heat Inherit Epitaph Primer because it can also crack control normal trash fodder if problematic with the Forest Cold procs. You can use whatever weapon you want, just make sure you inflict a heat proc with your primer tool first before shooting the Demolus with your Dread Incarnon. We have 225% heat in mods since this will get passed on to Dread instead of using Dread's heat percent mods to calculate damage. The Primed Bane from the shared double dip I mentioned earlier can also be found here. Encumber can be handy for stacking a bunch of status that Gunseal can work off on Dread and Karnon since it works like a final damage multiplier on it. And that's it. You find a demo, you shoot your primer, armor strip it be it with their strike Uneru or a high attack speed vast lock with shattering impact. Then just pull out your dread and shoot it in the head. One shot, one kill. Cheers. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always. As soon as possible like I've done with the Duviri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.